Hey, you guys, this is Jerry Morgan, uh, CEO of Code Blue Computing. And like many of you know, what we've been doing over the last, probably the last week and a half to two weeks, we've been doing uh, what I've been calling Denver Business Owner Virtual Town Halls. And what I want us, want us to do is we're bringing on people that, that I think can help us as a business community kind of uh, create create uh, different ways of thinking, uh, different ways to kind of manage where we are as business owners right now. And I'm really excited um, today. I have my friend, uh, my friend Simon here, who is the founder of Denver, uh, Denver Business Coach. And Simon, I just want you to introduce yourself real quickly and uh, tell everyone a little bit, a little bit about your uh, business and what you do. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm, I'm excited. Thank you for the invitation. And yeah, a little bit about myself. I think we started Denver Business Coach in 2012. So we've been um, at it now for, for quite a few years. Right. And I think uh, we're a team of uh, four coaches right now. And we're really primarily specializing in working with business owners who are interested in growing, scaling and uh, their business and primarily increase the value of their company. So okay. if they're looking to, at some point, sell the business down the road, position it for that, really, how do I create a sellable business and how do I create a valuable business? Okay, yeah. awesome. Now, so Simon, tell me, I know a lot of the, the business owners that I've been talking to, and even, even myself, I always um, tried to plan for, you know, like a dip, but never, in, in my brain anyways, did it ever pop into my head that you would literally have like the brakes hit? Uh, and for some businesses, they went from, you know, from, you know, tens of thousands of dollars per month to zero, you know, and, and is that, is that similar to conversations that you've had uh, with your clients that, you know, they, they never had kind of any planning for how they would handle something like this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's important to, to uh, um, differentiate because I think there's industries and businesses that are actually doing really well right now. Right. And then there's a lot of um, businesses that are unfortunately not, but right. we've definitely seen restaurants, catering companies, personal service companies that um, just by law at this point cannot perform any services and, and didn't have the infrastructure in place to do virtual um, virtual services or deliveries. And so th those businesses have been hit really right. hard for sure. Right. And I think, you know, but I think even for, for s some businesses, even a, a lot of them, the, they're kind of, they feel stuck, you know, they're, you know, they're feeling like they did, they literally can't, they can't do anything, you know, and I think for a lot of businesses where you wouldn't think that there, that there could be a pivot or there could be something that, that you do right now, there, there could be, but we have to be able to kind of um, take this time to maybe pull back you know, and, and look a little bit. There's even the, the lady that she is a seamstress that did my, my wedding dress and she put up the coolest post last night because they have completely pivoted and they're sewing these masks that every, that everyone needs right now. But at, you know, at first glance, a lady that makes custom wedding dresses, you wouldn't think there would be anything, you know, that, that she would be able to do in, in the current situation. So, in general, as as business owners, you know, in this time period, you know, what are what are some things that you would suggest that you know that we do? You know, we are where we are right now. We have to kind of create, um, you know, a, a plan or you know, be visualizing, you know, where where we're gonna go. What are some things uh, that we could be doing right now? Yeah, I think I think one thing that that I've seen really most business owners grappling with this last two weeks has been. Uh, securing cash flow right, right for the next few months and and with all the with the cares act being uh, released and the bank still trying to figure out what it means for them it's it's been a I think especially last week just challenging and trying to absorb so much information to just end up with not much more clarity on Friday than you actually had on Monday right and uh -huh. even today some of the banks are still not or uh, lenders are still not opening up for applications right. so I think um, I think to acknowledge that the last two weeks have really been just incredibly difficult and mm -hmm. challenging and, and uh, exhausting as a business owner, trying to keep up with all the information that was out there. Mm -hmm. Our, 
our responsibility to look ahead, think about our customers, think about our employees, think about our own families, our business. It's just been exhausting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think to, to acknowledge that in the first place is really important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and now also, I think the next step really is to, to take a step back, like really, I don't want to say disengage from the news, but most of the news are very general news, right? right? Where as a business owner, you really have to take a step back. And uh, we often suggest doing like a SWOT analysis, like mm -hmm. just very, my business, my industry, my strength, my weaknesses, my opportunities, and really focus in on how is this really affecting me um, and kind of like disengage from the general mood you know which i understand is very difficult but from that place i think the the vision narrows a little bit and you can bring more clarity to really what is the step forward and we can talk more about what some of these actions are but but i think you know as soon as business owners have kind of like figured out their team have figured out the immediate grants or funds that they need to apply for it's right. really time to take a step back and like what just happened? Where am I? Mm -hmm. What's next? Right. Yeah. And you know what, what's interesting with um, my husband and I, we have an interesting business where we've still, you know, we've, we've had to adjust, you know, how, how we like to work. We like to be face to face with our clients, but it's fairly easy for us to move into, you know, a remote situation and be able to, um, be able to to support our clients and you know and, and of course in that first that first week we were really busy with making sure that everyone was set up to to be able to to work remotely you know with, with their teams in addition to to our team but one of the things that that we've been able to talk about is um, you know you always have things that you want to do in your business, you know, you want to create those processes, right? You want to create those, those, those pre procedures. And, you know, so many times we'll say, well, I'm too busy, you know, I'm too busy to do that. And th those are some of the conversations that we've had, you know, we're like, you know, actually, once we kind of get through this triage, you know, period of, of making sure, you know, everybody that needs to work from home can, you know, this is actually, you know, a time that, that we, can be working on these these things that you know we've been putting off saying saying that we were too busy you know to do but it goes back to that that whole thing you know you have to pull yourself back from being frozen of you know freaking out you know about you know what's you know because we don't know these things you know we don't know when you know when we're going to be able to kind of you know get back to to work as as we know it you know we don't know what's going to happen with the economy we can't control any of those things but what we can control is you know creating you know a better foundation you know for for our business you know when we do you know when we do emerge from this but those things are hard you know it is hard right now to kind of pull back and try to get you know a better you know a better view of your business where it is right now but then also your business where you know where it's going to be you know when we pop out on on the other side of this right yeah, I mean, we've seen, you know, some of our clients are are absolutely taking advantage of that, right. whether it is uh, in, implementing new technology in their mm -hmm. system, um, whether it is a new POS system, whether it is um, uh, practice management systems that are very hard to implement when you're going at full speed, like you right. can never take the time to really, or the, the impact would be so high. Now right. is a good time to take advantage of that for sure. Um, the procedures, a lot of businesses have HIPAA compliance that they haven't really, you know, um, kept up with. Um, so, so those are definitely good, good places to start. I think one thing that I just from real time uh, experience can say, you know, unless you kind of like get settled and this is where I'm at, it's like hard to pull these projects out of the drawer and say, okay, I'm now going to work on my right. operations manual, mm -hmm. just because it's like, a little disconnected still, but, but right. once you figure out, okay, I have a plan for my next six, 12 weeks, then you can really start plugging those things in. And, and it's an incredible opportunity to, to clean house and, and streamline your business. And right. all of that. Yeah. So how, how would you uh, recommend, 
a, a business kind of start to put together a plan together over these these next six to 12 weeks? I think, it, you know, I would assume it would start with making sure that, you know, you have your finances as set as they can be, whether that's, you know, your own, you know, your own emergency funds that you set in place, whether you have grants, whether you have loans, but then kind of from, from there, you know, how would you, how would you build it out from, from there? I, I would really look at it, take the opportunity to see, you know, what is changing? I mean, this is the part that you already acknowledge. It's kind of right. hard to see, like, what is the recovery going to look like? Is it going right. to be, I'm, I think we all know it's not just going to be a all clear, right. let's go out and have right. fun again. Open. Yeah. <laughs> the economy's open. No. So, so I think that's really the next step as a, as the CEO of your company, you have right. to like, anticipate that's your job as a visionary is to kind of like anticipate for my industry for my business what is that recovery going to look like and mm -hmm. you know if you're in the events industry and you can pretty much anticipate until we have a vaccine there's going to be certain uh stipulations on how many people can come together and you know there's mm -hmm. just things to that you if you apply some intelligence you can foresee what your industry is going to look like and i think that's that's the next step is what is the most likely scenario for recovery in my industry and in mm -hmm. my business and and once you have that then you can say what are what are the opportunities there and uh, we have some some business owners that are actually you know they're stressed out i think everyone is mm -hmm. but they're also really acknowledging um, you know, we were not diversified enough in terms right. of our revenue, or we were all over the place. And there were a lot of things we were doing that were not really profitable. Mm -hmm. And so now we can really focus, um, focus on what is profitable. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's really the next step is what is our business model going to be for the next 12, 18 months? Where is most likely going to be money coming in? What mm -hmm. are people really going to need? What are our vendors going to need? What are our customers going to need? Right. And and even look at that. Like some businesses are going to have a completely different customer base mm -hmm. than they had prior, and really be open to that. Not just secure funding and pretend everything is going to be exactly the same when they're right. moving forward. But mm -hmm. like, hey, this is really an interrupt. Things could look differently. I need to pivot my, my business. Mm -hmm. And there's even, uh, there's even some folks in my industry that were, were very um, hyper niched, you know, and, you know, we had uh, some of the guys that did only dental, you know, did, did only, did only dental and did just one, just one industry. And, you know, as a result of, of this, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, no, I need, you know, I need to be in, you know, in multiple industries so that, you know, if something like this happens, um, it's not your entire customer base is really, you know, is really, is really struggling, you know? So I, I do think there are positive uh, things that, that we can pull from this from a, from a planning perspective. Um, you know, obviously I would, I would like it to have been in a less severe, <laughs> a severe way. Cause it's just like trial, you know, trial under fire. But, you know, as we start to put some of these, you know, some of these, these plans into place, like how would we go forward with, you know, maybe implementing, you know, some of these things and, you know, putting, you know, some of these things into, in, into place. Um, well, in, in, in my mind, I think, yeah it's a good time to really think about how have you been running your business. Right. Um, it, it is going to be, I think there's a reality that there's going to be so many variables that it is going to be a little bit, you just have to try different things. Right. You know, you don't really know how the cu customer is going to respond. You don't really know what messaging is going to work. You don't really know uh, what people are going to be willing to spend money on and whatnot. Like those are, right. those are some questions. But I think with any business, you have to find what is the most probable scenario for success and do that. I think, you know, one exercise that we do with, with very early stage businesses is we go through what's called the business model canvas, right. which uh, kind of like identifies what are your key resources, your key vendors, key activities, and then your value proposition. What are your customer base, your distribution channel? Uh, your cost structure and your revenue structure and really spend some time um, digging into those individual areas is is time well spent because i do think 
even within two weeks, three weeks, we're going to have more clarity of what the next phase is actually going to look like. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're trying to rush through this too quickly, you're, right. you're going to do work that you might have to completely redo. Mm -hmm. uh, so unless you have a certainty um, that a certain service or product is, is going to be a winner, I would, I would actually just really slow down at this point and really take, um, take inventory. Okay. And what are some things that we can do right now as it relates to maybe our, our customers or our employees kind of in, in we're, we're in this time frame because our, our customers are in flux, you know, our employees are in flux. Are there things that we should be uh, doing as part of this, this process for them right now as well? Yeah, I think communicate. I mean, mm -hmm. for sure, you know, I think with the employees, you know, I know a lot of business owners had to make some really challenging um, decisions in right. these last two weeks. And um, I think with that, the sooner you have clarity of where your business is going to go, the sooner you're able to communicate with your employees also, if you have to let them go um, and care for them in that way. I also think for the, for the team that's still here, really make sure they're taking advantage of all the options that are out there. Right. Um, there's a book, I don't remember what it is, but it talks about how in an emergency situation, like most people actually freeze. You know, right. there's the ones that go right into action, that's their mm -hmm. default, but most people just are kind of like in shock and don't know what to do. Right. So when you're checking in with your employees, questions like, is there anything I can do for you? Mm -hmm. Are not really helpful because they don't actually know what they don't know right so so take the take the time to be more specific with the types of question and support that you're asking mm -hmm. because because they might not know what they're missing out on on the on the um, opportunities that are out there support that's out there and so that's that's one thing with the employees right i think with the customers it's it, the reality is for some businesses there's not a lot of sales going on right now mm -hmm. But the main thing you can do is to be in communication with your customers, see what you can do for them, have enough clarity in your business that when you're approaching the customers and they have questions whether or not we can reduce the service or we can set up a payment plan, that you're already thinking ahead and being able to answer those questions for them mm -hmm. and really show up as someone that... Um, that is supporting them. You know, we hear a lot, we're in this to get, we're all in this together. Right. But if, as a business owner, the more clear you are where you're at with your business, the more clear you can be in your, with your customers. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, communicate. And then, and then one thing that is really interesting that started uh, appearing this last week, which is at some point um, here in Denver, at least, you know, we've yeah. been in a job market with almost no, um, people looking for work. Right. Um, but now it's going to be how, when, when the economy is going to pick up again, how do I actually hire good talent? So mm -hmm. I think there is, there's a way as a business owner to, if you know people that would be good additions to your team to mm -hmm. really stay in communication with them, even though you can offer them something, right. But, but keep a short list of your team that once things pick up again and don't, uh, don't let those relationships go cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's really interesting you brought that up. We actually were in the process of hiring um, a help desk uh, guy like the week, you know, the, the week before and kind of as this process has gone by, you know, we've been keeping in touch with them and just kind of having those conversations that, you know, we don't, you know, we you know, we don't know kind of when, you know, when, when things are going to work out that we can do that, but, you know, you know, so that he knows, you know, we're, we're still, we're still wanting to bring him on, you know, as, as part of the team, it's just, we're not able to do anything with, with where we, with where we are right now, you know, and I, and I do, I, I think that's, you know, that's definitely um, important because even people that you might want on your team that aren't there yet, they're in flux too. You know, so just, you know, kind of reaching, you know, reaching out, you know, out to them that, you know, that they know that, you know, you're, you're still, you know, 
you're still going to do that position. And just that you're just reaching out to them that, you know, you're the kind of employer that, you know, that actually cares how they're, you know, how they're doing as well. And I, I think uh, back to the um, customers, I think something else that could be valuable right now as well is just in those, in those conversations, you know, that there may be things that we can help our customers with that aren't even necessarily related to the service that we provide to them right now, but it might be, you know, just, a, you know, another, um, you know, a third party um, you know, looking at a situation, but just letting them know that we're available to, to help them through this, you know, whether it's related to, to what we do or not, you know, as part of those conversations. Yeah, I always, I mean, with our clients, we're very hands-on, but but right. really asking questions like, how is, how is this impacting you right now? What's right. happening in your business? How is this going to impact your business long-term? Like, the better we can understand our customers the better we can then provide those resources, referrals, and additional help to them and really show up as a partner, not just as a vendor, you know, an expense item on their, on their. Right. Right. So it's something valuable, you know, valuable to them as opposed to, you know, something that's, you know, that's easily like, Oh, you know, that, that, you know, could be easier to cut if, if they're not seeing the value that you provide now for, for your clients, because most of your clients are, um, more kind of B2B service related um, type of clients. Is that true? Both. You know, we actually did have quite a few clients in the hospitality service and, and um, retail industry. Right. And then we have some B2B businesses for sure as well. Yeah. And what, what have been kind of some of their, their biggest concerns? Has it been related to cash flow or, you know, or is it kind of across the board as far as their biggest concerns? Um, I would say right now it is the the uncertainty. I right. think that's you know some businesses are are prepared well enough to to get through the next two three months from a cash flow perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really the uncertainty of I think the what the recovery is going to look like because mm-hmm. it really you know a business can can survive for several months not breaking even or, or having a loss. But then if the recovery is 12 months, 18 right. months, even get back to step to where they were before, then it might not really be, that's a different planning that you need to do than if you if you think you can be to old levels within six months or three, three months. So that's the, that's the main challenge mm-hmm. um, for sure. Getting set up with remote, but I think we're, we're through that for the businesses that have to get that set up and right. helping, the, helping the employees with their childcare and the kids running around and um, <laughs> right. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah. And, and then some have, have supplier issues as well, you know, where they were dependent on supply supply chains that are not working the way that they should right now. So mm-hmm. there's, there's lots of challenges. I, I always think, you know, we'd like to already, we, I think business owners are visionaries. We can mm-hmm. see things are going to get better, right. you know, in six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, but, but it's still a really difficult time right now. We still have to actually get there. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where I think um, what I, what I focus on with a lot of business owners is just like, wh- where's your consciousness at? What are you focused on? Do you have clarity? Don't just, get busy doing a lot of busy work that doesn't really go anywhere better slow down and, and bring clarity to your, to your plan. Um, I think that's, that's a lot. And, and we're just coming out of like these crazy two, three weeks that were just right. very challenging. Yeah. No, and it is, you know, even for me, I'm still at the point where, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, is this real? You know, it's just, it's, it's just, it really, it does, it blows your mind. It's just something that, you know, all the things that you think, you know, could happen in business, let alone in your life, you know, and it's just, you know, it, it really, it does, you know, it, it throws you for a loop, you know, and it does, you know, it, you know, I, I'm just to the point where this week where I feel like, you know, I'm starting to kind of get more of a, you know, more of an even keel about it and, you know, really wanting to, um, you know, to kind of create something really positive for my business out of, you know, where we are, because it's like, we're, we're here, you know, so, you know, let's, you know, let's really, you know, dial into the things that, that we need to do 
to make our, you know, our business stronger going forward, you know, because under no, no other situation, you know, would we have the opportunity to, you know, to do that. Um, I know a lot of businesses that uh, we've been talking to in the last couple of weeks, because the economy was so good, they weren't necessarily running on, um, you know, a great model as far as cash flow goes because they had, you know, um, you know, so much coming in each month that, you know, they didn't really have to have to plan. And, you know, and that's, that's where some, where some of the businesses are really, you know, really, really hurting right now. Going forward, what are some, some thoughts or some strategies, you know, that, that you would go over with a client as it relates to, you know, as it relates to cash flow for your business? Um, so as it relates to cash flow for your business, right. I think always what we what we strive with our clients is that you you shorten the cycle of accounts receivable as much as possible. I right. think any business model, ideally, you you collect the money for the service or product that you're providing 100% upfront before mm-hmm. any services are rendered, mm-hmm. and that allows you to to not carry a lot of like operational costs. Mm-hmm. Like we have some clients that started with us that would first of all be late sending out invoices then they wouldn't get their invoices for 60 days back and some right. have like accounts receivable of 120 days 180 days oh geez and and when you have that in a situation like that you're not going to get that money back in right mm-hmm. your 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 whole business model is very vulnerable so we we always look for two main things i think recurring revenue streams mm-hmm. um that are being built up front. Mm-hmm. And if, if you have a model that if you can implement those two things, it's the cash flow is going to be completely different going through the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the other thing, you know, that you just mentioned that we really focus on at the end of the day, you know, how much, how profitable your business is, is a right. key driver of the value of your business and how detached it is from you as an owner is the second key driver. Mm. Um, because, and so this is a great opportunity to really look at where has it been Jerry that's been doing all this when really mm-hmm. someone else could be doing it. Right. Um, and we have several clients that are, this is the opportunity. It's not just Brad and John who are doing it, but mm-hmm. actually we can uh, implement someone else. We can bring someone on board and start um, tutoring or mentoring that person in that position and really work yourself out of being an operator in the business mm-hmm. in the long run. That's incredible, valuable from a point of being able to exit your business. Mm-hmm. So those are, those are areas we're focusing on right now. And, and then I think the reality is for a lot of business owners is just where can, what are the revenue streams that I can most efficiently, most quickly tap into right now that, mm-hmm are going to get me through this period of time, right? That's definitely the conversation, the right. short-term conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and I think a, a lot of, you know, the, for the short term, it is really kind of looking at things, you know, differently. And, and maybe there's things that you haven't haven't done before that, you know, that, that you can do now. I know there's even a, a gal here in Broomfield that has a dance studio and she's transitioned to, you know, to virtual dance classes because, I mean, that's, that's all recurring revenue, you know, and so th- they had to create a way to keep that, you know, to keep that, to keep that, that revenue, revenue coming in, or even I had a, a lady I was chatting with the other day that has like a balloon, a balloon business, and so what they talked about was, well, you know, there's all of these kids that aren't getting their graduation you know there's still opportunities for you to sell those displays for people to have their parties you know at at home so it's just you know really trying to look at you know look at things you know differently um you know and i know a lot of businesses um before now didn't necessarily have recurring revenue and that was okay because they had had so much you know coming in and and i do agree now is a really good time to really look at your business and figure out ways to create that, you know, because when something like, like this happens, 
it's, you know, it's devastating, you know, to, you know, to, to, you know, if you're based on, on project work, you know, to figure out, you know, different, uh, different, different ways. And we always talk about having different streams of revenue into, you know, into our business that are not kind of related, you know, related to, you know, each other. And depending on, on your business, that's what people should, should, should really be looking into. Yeah. I mean, we always look at 15%, you know, if, if 15% of your revenue is coming from one customer, right. 15% or more, that's high risk. If it's coming from one particular source, that's high risk because something could happen. It could close down and all of a sudden you're, you're out that, that money. So diversification there is, is really, is really important as well. Um, yeah. And I also think a lot of times when people have a lot of revenue coming in, they're, they may not necessarily be paying paying attention to whether what they're doing is profitable or not because there's you know it's like it's flowing in flowing out but as long as it's flowing flowing in but you know we, we may find that you know what we were doing we didn't have set up in a profitable way and it's a really good opportunity to you know to take a deeper dive into you know the pricing also right well, I mean that's I'm so glad you're bringing that up because that's really what I mean when we're saying like like slowing down and really looking at your business model in that right. way because there you know there might be situations where it is a loss leader and we understand there's a strategic reason why we're offering this service or this product at this price point because it brings people in the door and the lifetime value of the customer is far exceeding the losses that we're taking here. But, but more often than not, it is, well, as long as it's making money, it's good. But the profit margin are, are never fully examined. And, and that's like right now is such a great opportunity to clean house and really look what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Is there a better way to do it? Does this make sense? Is this going to be still a viable business model in three years from now? Could we allocate our resources somewhere different? And, and I think that's where I would suggest like really bring in, bring in a partner or bring in someone else that is looking at your business model just from a different angle. And is kind of like agnostic in a certain way Mm -hmm. and challenges your, your, your thinking. Um, you know, whether it's a mastermind group or something like that, where you're really getting like a second eye Mm -hmm. because it just challenges the way we've been operating and just, you know, accepted it as this is how our business model is and we can't change it. Everything is different now. Right. You know, and that is true. You know, everything is, everything is different now, but, and I do, I I think a lot of times, you know, you'll set these, you know, these pricing models way back in the day you know, and then you don't really look at them because, because you're busy. And then a lot of times you'll hit, you know, not this, but just on, you know, like a Tuesday afternoon, you'll be like, well, why am I not, you know, why, you know, why don't we have, you know, any money? All this is, is coming in when you don't realize you've built, you know, you've built no ability for that, for that money to stay in your business. And I think the one thing we know for sure, kind of going through this is we do, you know, we do have to create you know, more profit in our business. We do have to create ways, you know, to kind of plan, you know, for, you know, for blips like these, you know, to occur. I mean, hopefully not like this, but, you know, but, you know, we do, you know, we do have to plan for that as we go through the process, you know, and we're trying to create, you know, a business with a a strong foundation and a business that, you know, eventually we want to exit and we want to be able to sell it. Um, You know, kind of what are, what are some of the things that, you know, um, that are important or things that we should be doing to create a business that, you know, that, that we're going to be able to, to sell. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one thing that you just brought up, um, Jerry, is really good. It's actually an exercise we're doing with one of our clients, too, which is a uh, similar business model as you have with, like, recurring service um, right. service agreements and so forth. And uh, we say, okay, this is our currently listed price. And then we look at a list of customers and seeing what are we actually billing them out. And what right. we've seen is there's very, very a lot of like special arrangements and early (laughs) discounts and they were grandfathered in Uh so that they're, they're like all over the place and the services that are provided are being provided at completely different price points. Uh And so that is definitely something, you know, this is a great opportunity to clean, clean house and just even just the exercise of 
getting aware of what is happening and then figuring out, is there an action to be taken about that, you know, individually for each account. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, some of the very fundamentals that we're always looking at uh, with building a valuable company is, you know, obviously the financial performance, Mm -hmm. uh, which is not just the how much profit and and earnings you produce, but also how defendable are those numbers in terms of, having like a third party bookkeeping system in place, having those numbers be audited, really having clean separation between personal and, and business. Mm-hmm. And that, so that's an area that we're really focused on. Um, understanding uh, neutrality in terms of neutrality from vendors, neutrality from um, clients and mm-hmm. neutralities from employees also, you know, if you're, if you have this one key employee that's basically holding your company hostage because if that person leaves, mm-hmm. every, no one knows what to do for a potential acquirer, that's going to mm-hmm. be a high risk situation, right? right? That's where training, redundancies, operation manuals, all of that is, is really, um, really important. We already talked about decreasing the dependency on the, on the business owner. Right. And, and one thing I think that we're always talking about is, you know, when you're exiting the business, you, you're you done with your business and mm-hmm. you're finally, like, hopefully, like, riding off into the sunset or right. whatever. Um, but the person, that's buying, <laughs> the person that's buying the business is just, just starting out, right? Mm-hmm. So establishing what is the potential, the growth potential of their business, um, establishing a really clear messaging, a clear brand, clear value proposition. Like, those are all things that maybe we're not as important because we had like 10 years of growth right right now. And like everyone was just, if you're in business, you were kind of doing well just because the economy was just growing. Yeah, And here Mm -hmm. in Denver specific, especially. Mm -hmm. So there's really like cleaning up the brand, um, understanding your growth potential that you might not have the energy to do because you've been in business for 30 years. But Mm -hmm. if someone else came in, there's really the potential to take something off and, and have those conversations and and put it in writing. Like that's, uh, that's really important because then you have a narrative for a potential acquirer that is much more attractive than just like, man, this business is exhausting and I just can't do it one one day longer. Like that's not an attractive (laughs) Sign on the dotted Sorry. line. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you know, yeah. and, I th- and there's there's a lot there that that you said that it, that I think is is really interesting. Um, you know, the first one being is having an a a third party book, you know, book, you know, bookkeeping bookkeeping company having those books, you know, audited because I know in general, you know, people are not, you know, by and large, people are people are not doing that, but that's an important piece to look at um, if you're looking at selling. And even that's a piece that I think as people are looking at getting these loans where, where they can be in trouble, because if their books are not pristine, you know, you're going to have trouble getting, you know, getting the loans as well. So, I mean, that's definitely something I think as, as business owners, if, you know, if, if we're not doing that right now, we, you know, we should be looking at it. Um, Another thing that that people have told me that's important if you if you want to be able to sell is having uh, kind of long term contracts. You know that like if you've got a business where you've got you know fifty you know fifty grand a month coming in, but there's no contracts with it, but you just know it's going to come in. It's it's better to have you know two three year deals you know that are um, that that are transferable to to the new owners, right? Yeah, and 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 that's where the value. You know, if you have a million dollar business in revenue, and all of it comes in with one time transaction, versus right. a million dollar that's coming in recurring revenue, right. that are is is a completely different valuation of that. So both right. are one million dollar business, but this with the recurring revenue, it's exponentially more valuable. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, long term contracts um, is is important is critically important. Yeah, and I, and I know for for my business in particular, and you and I have talked about this, but for my business in particular, when you've built a business from from scratch, you know people, um, you know people, um, uh, oh, what sort of like when they think of the business, they think of me, 
you know. And so as you get to the point where you're trying to build something that you that you sell, it's it's very hard to come up with a way to kind of pull, you know, kind of pull yourself back from the business. And and even as you try sometimes, you know, customers that have worked with you for a long time are not you know, completely, completely comfortable with that, you know, so that's, you know, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a, a process. And to me, I think for me anyways, I think that's one of the hardest things to do to be able to create something that you're going to be able to sell eventually. It's kind of, it's a question we, we ask any business owner that starts working with us. We're, right. we're asking like what percentage of current clients are doing business because of you, the owner mm-hmm. and how, and as an owner, like how many of your customers do you know by first name and all mm-hmm. of that? And the owners are usually really proud that, yes, I know all my customers, they right. love me, they do work. <laughs> and, and then we have to come in and say, you know, here it's actually the opposite is true. For an acquirer, if they love Jerry and they're buying a business and Jerry's not there and his owners get understand too late in the game mm-hmm. because they just want to, okay, I'm ready to go out. But if you can have a few years to really understand, the best scenario is that people don't even know who owns the company. Mm-hmm. Because that's really then a very low risk for a potential acquirer. And it's right. completely, especially in the small business world, that's hard uh-huh. to do, but you want to move on that spectrum more on that side, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and one of the reasons that, that I wanted to talk to you today is that what, what I feel, and I, know, and I know you feel similar, is that, you know, this isn't all doom and gloom right now you know, that, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of really bad things happening right now in in our economy and, you know, the unemployment, you know, those are all, you know, are all really hard things that we're going through right now. But, you know, the thing is, you know, like we can take this, take this time, you know, and really focus on our, our business, you know, create a stronger, you know, create a stronger business that, you know, that we're going to be ready to do things differently. And that's one of the things I keep telling my husband. I said, you know, when we go on the, the other side of this, you know, we're, you know, we're we're all, to whatever degree you're going to be forever changed by this, you know, we're going to be changed as, you know, how, how events are run, you know, we're going to be changed, you know, on, um, you know, kind of the focus, you know, the, the, the focus, the focus of our, our business, but, you know, but, you know, we will, you know, get on the other side of this and, you know, and if we can plan and, you know, kind of figure out, you know, where there's going to be opportunity, because there are going to be opportunities, you know, that, you know, we can come out, you know, stronger, on the, on the other side, are there things that we, that we haven't talked about today or things that, that you want to add to our, to our conversation that we haven't hit, Simon? Um, I mean, there's, there's certain things that obviously, you know, would fall under subcategories of of what we've talked about. Like, I think within the, within the category of figuring out cash flow for the next period of time, I think, there's a lot to do there and, and we can yeah. do that offline. I don't think we have to dive into that. Right. Um, but I really, I think what you just said is, is important because we don't want to just somehow make it through this period of time, right. but we really want to take advantage and we actually want to capture and um, solidify the lessons that we're learning right now like having a cash reserve, looking at profitability, looking at uh, diversification, mm-hmm. not, not waiting. I, I mean, I've so many times I've heard this last couple of weeks, like business owners say, I can't believe how much I've changed in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. you know, where they were dragging their feet and not implementing and all of that. Mm-hmm. Now they were forced and they were just taking massive action and mm-hmm. have changed their business around and done things really quickly. And I think that's the, the spirit that's really that we want to be in, but we can't go through this casually because I think there are going to be a lot of casualties yeah. in terms of businesses, unfortunately not going to yeah. make it. So if you have the, the blessing, the benediction that you're a business that will make through this, like don't, don't take that lightly and really um, clean house. I think um, one thing, there's a couple of things we have. Um, th- there's two books that that I think that our clients that really read and implemented in the last couple of years are looking significantly better than ones that haven't. And one is profit first and one is built to sell. Mm. And, and those two books are, 
we can see a dramatic uh, impact of business owners who have incorporated those principles and who haven't. And so I would definitely recommend any business owner to, to read those and start working, start working with those principles. Okay. Yeah. And I do, I, I like profit first. I read that, I read that last summer and it, de- it's definitely a, a completely different view as far as, you know, what um, comes naturally to you and, you know, but it, but it is, it's a good way to kind of, you know, look at things in all these different, you know, in all these different buckets. Cause it is so easy to, to just when, you know, when money comes, because it is like, if you're not, if you're not paying attention, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a strategy, it literally is money comes in, money goes out, you know, and it's just, you know, it's not, it's not creating what it's, you know, what it's supposed to, you know, create. So I do, I like, you know, I like that book. I like that book as well. All right. So Simon, I want to thank you for, uh, for chatting with us today. I appreciate your, your knowledge every time I get to talk with you. So why don't you uh, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you if, if they want to, if they want to chat some more about their business specifics. Yeah, I think uh, the easiest way to get a hold of us is uh, through our website. It's uh, www.denverbusinesscoach.com. And um, you can see what we're all about and, and the list of our coaches And one thing that we do offer right now is really a a free coronavirus impact strategy session that is absolutely no strings attached. That's really just like we're sitting down, we're giving you whatever you bring to the table, we're giving you our best input on that. So that's an offer that we'd like to extend and and really hope people are taking us up on that. And and then my personal email address is uh, simonatdenverbusinesscoach.com and I, I look forward to any questions I'm always checking and responding. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Simon. And uh, you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.